Hi folks, hi YouTube, uh, Steve back with another video, um, another uh, of the, what do you call them again? The weekly chat. Uh, I really like that, I really think it's kind of a cool thing. And uh, I believe this week's, I say I believe, I know it's uh, this week's topic is films that we would like to see again for the first time. And that's a, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. Uh, I think of like different albums that I would love to hear again for the first time. You know, uh, different artists that I would love to discover again for the first time. And film is definitely in that uh, same uh, sort of vein. I'm walking around, so sorry. Uh, and there's quite a few. I mean, I could list, I guess, all my favorite movies uh, would be on that list. But just to name a few... I guess the first one would have to be. This is gonna seem odd because I don't. I'm, I'm not a Disney person, at all. I mean, at all. I I don't care for Disney films. Uh, never grew up on them. Never had any cause to watch them. Still don't really have any cause to watch them. But when I was a kid, uh, my parents took me to a. Um, it was an old movie theater built in the twenties. But not one of those palace theaters that you know that, that you see that's very opulent and uh, just big and epic. This was a very small, small town theater in uh, Pocomoke City, Maryland, uh, called the Marva, and they took me to see a film called Song of the South. Of course, it wasn't uh, premiering then; it was a re-release before it was banned and I guess disowned by Dis Disney. Um, and I, I've not seen it since. I remember loving that movie. Uh, the, the, the action, not the action, but, uh, the music. I loved the Uncle Remus character. I loved the, uh, the animation inside the live action film. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, and, you know, I, I didn't think that it was any way racist or, uh, offensive, and I guess it's easy for me to say that, but seriously, I, I didn't, I, I looked at the characters as just the same as me, and I remember just coming away from that movie feeling, feeling good, feeling energized, and again, I, I don't care for Disney films, but that's an amazing one, and kind of hard to find these days, I, I'd like to find it, probably have to bootleg it, that's how things go usually these days. Especially with movies that are censored, but Song of the South, I have fond memories. Uh, another film, let's see. I would love to go see, for the first time, when it was first released, Blade Runner. Uh, one of my favorite movies. It's, it's definitely up in my top ten uh, favorite films. It, uh, it combines aspects of film noir and science fiction that uh, really interests me. That's my that's my uh, Metropolis poster. Uh, really, really interests me. I love the fusion. It's called cyberpunk, and I guess it has some cyberpunk aesthetics. But it's more of just a, a of a detective story with a lot of really cool science fiction elements, a lot of great visuals by Ridley Scott. I've seen that movie probably 20 times. All the different versions of it. And of course, uh, when it was released theatrically, uh, the cut that was released theatrically uh, is not the same cut that uh, most people think of as definitive these days. It had the voiceover narration. It had the kind of the happy ending tacked on at the end. But still, to have been in a theater in, was it 82 when it was released? To be in a theater and see it for the first time. Unlike anything I'm sure anybody had seen at that point, I think that would have been pretty awesome. Uh, I did get to see, uh, back last fall, um, the night that Blade Runner 2048, or 49, was it 2048 or 49? I need to look that up. Um, the night that that was released, it was a double feature, at, of all places, the Regal Cinemas. Uh, it was an IMAX screen. And they showed a double feature of the original Blade Runner and then the premiere of the uh, new film. 
And uh, that was eye-opening. That was ex absolutely amazing. Um, and honestly, the new Blade Runner film, I gotta say, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Completely autonomous. It's, it takes place in the same universe, obviously, and there's some similar characters that, that are in both films. But it didn't try to improve upon the first Blade Runner. And that, to me, is the cardinal sin that I was expecting it to commit. So, uh, to be able to see that again for the first time, you know, uh, the first Blade Runner would be just amazing. Let me look at the title of that. 2049. Blade Runner 2049. Sorry about that. Sorry for all the movement, but <laughs> I'm just getting off work and I'm kind of... Uh, having a sugar high right now. Another film that I would like to see again for the first time when it was first released would be 1958's Vertigo, Hitchcock's... probably my f second favorite Hitchcock film. My wife and I just went uh, across the Chesapeake Bay to see uh, an IMAX, it was on an IMAX screen, uh, re-presentation of Vertigo last Sunday. Uh, 60th anniversary, I guess, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, with a kind of an interesting intro and outro from Eddie Muller from TCM. And, wow, I, I, I felt like I'd never seen the film before at all. It's just seeing it on the big screen, the way films are supposed to be seen, technically, and just to see the, the detail and the shot composition and the performances... Um, in the script, uh, in the special effects that they use, it just completely blew my mind away. And, you know, honestly, seeing that last weekend was kind of like seeing it for the first time, because you just can't get that amount of detail on a, on, on a TV screen. Even if you have a big TV screen, you can't really get that kind of detail. And... The, the scope of it, the, the score, the beautiful Bernard Herrmann score. I, I just, I loved every second of it. And honestly, I think Vertigo is kind of climbing up my list of favorite films. Uh, Kim Novak, who a lot of people give a hard time for this movie as being kind of flat, when really she's playing it understated. It's not that she's flat, because she can actually act. And I think if Hitchcock had cast... Vera Miles, which who uh, he had originally wanted to cast until she became pregnant, I think it would have been a vastly different film. I have no problem with the fact that uh, Jimmy Stewart and uh, Kim Novak have a vast number of years between the two. It, it didn't bother me at all. And to be able to experience that in 1958 for the first time, unlike anything anyone's ever seen, I don't know. Probably not, but it's groundbreaking. It's something that, uh, it's certainly presented in a way that no one's ever seen that kind of thing before, I think. And, uh, you know, if, uh, initially the film didn't do well at all. It was only until it was sort of rediscovered that people started to realize that this is a, this is a work of genius. And Hitchcock never made a film like that, like, you know, before or after Vertigo. People say Psycho is his best film, and maybe it is. I don't think so, but it's certainly not Psycho I go back to uh, and rewatch. I have to say my first favorite film would be a uh, Hitchcock film, uh, Strangers on a Train. Great film. I was trying to think of a few more films, but I think that that's going to do it. I think that uh, those three are impressed upon me as being just very special films, and would have loved to have been able to go back in time and see them for the first time. But uh, thank you for watching very much, and uh, until the next video, adios.